Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for the Untangle 101 webinar series. Today, we'll be going over uh, our NG Firewall solution and how it is uh, ideal for schools who have uh, limited budgets or limited IT resources. My name is Shannon Bonfiglio. I'm part of the marketing team here at Untangle, and I'll be your host today. I also have with us uh, one of our sales engineers, Chad McNaughton, who will be taking us through this presentation and uh, a live demonstration. Just a few housekeeping rules before we get started. Um, please be sure you're selecting the correct audio preference. On the right-hand side, you'll see the option to use a telephone or uh, your computer speakers. If you, if you choose uh, to use your computer speakers, please make sure you have a strong internet connection. Uh, if you use to, uh, choose to use the telephone, you will need to use the access code that is provided. Um, as always, uh, our webinars are always recorded, so um, you'll be able to rewatch or revisit um, this webinar after it has ended. It will be posted on the Untangle YouTube channel within 24 hours. And as always, we do have a few staff members on hand to help with any questions. So please be sure to submit any questions you have uh, in the questions panel on the right hand side, and we'll try and get to those. In this webinar, we are also um, giving out a $50 Amazon gift card to one lucky attendee. That'll be at the end of the webinar, so please uh, stick around to see if you're that lucky winner. And with that, I'll pass it over to Chad. All right, thanks, Shannon. Um, thanks everyone for joining us today. As Shannon said, this is one of our 101 series, so we're not doing any deep dives into anything. This is just gonna be some, some metrics and some easy solutions uh, for Untangle in a school. Um, the state of school cybersecurity that you see on my screen here is uh, obviously a little scary, to be perfectly honest. Um, you know, financial gain and espionage are, are currently the top motives for breaches, even in, in educational sectors. Uh, social media breaches are growing and targeting the education industry, and dedicated denial of service attacks and, and things like insider threats continue to cause really big problems for educational organizations. Uh, you can see this data is part of the 2018 Verizon Data Breach Investigations Report. You can look all this stuff up online if you like. Um, as Shannon said, though, this will be available on our YouTube later if you want to go back and, and pause and, and go through some of these slides that have a little more intense data on them. Obviously, the frequency uh, is becoming a, a scary thing, like I said. Um, this, this was not really as big a problem you know, a few years ago, but everyone's, everyone basically has kind of become a target now, and the educational sector is no different, whether you're a private school, public school, religious school, secular school, it doesn't really matter. You can see financial and espionage are really the main motivators. This used to be kind of motivated by fun. You know, people would breach a school to play with records, things like that, but now there's so much personal information available that there's financial gain and, you know, causes for actual espionage and subterfuge on your network. You can see there that the data compromised in the educational sector is 72% personal. That's a big change, like I was just saying. So medical information as well is available in schools now. Um, you know, so they're subject to lots of different compliance standards, things like CIPA, obviously, and HIPAA when you have medical information available. So the school cybersecurity disadvantage is a very obvious thing. Um, that's a lot of flags on my map there. Each one of those is some sort of attack. Um, some of the bigger problems in the educational sector are that schools lack resources and expertise to address all of these emerging threats. Um, you know, industry regulations and, and really complex security solutions can make it difficult to implement a solution that can actually address all these. So some recent ransomware attacks uh, hit a Connecticut, a Connecticut school district. You know, um, about 418 incidents reported in the last couple of years are from public schools and districts. Uh, phishing, ransomware, unauthorized disclosure are top culprits. You can see on my screen here, uh, there's a few flags up near my office there in Colorado. Uh, a few, two or three years ago, a district up here in Boulder, Colorado actually got fished for close to $1 million over the series of a few months. Um, and you know, once again, that's that's a phishing scam. That's not just a piece of malware that got installed on the network. You know, that's that's something that someone was interacting with. So user education is a really, really valuable resource as well and, and should always be part of your, your multi-layered approach to things like antivirus and, and ransomware malware prevention. So this is when we would probably want to introduce that school to untangle, right? Um, this is gonna be comprehensive next-gen firewall at your gateway. You know, it's quick and easy to deploy, easy to manage, um, and we're going to protect students and help you maintain compliance for all of these different standards. 
So it's a low cost subscription based software solution. Uh, we do offer pretty big discounts for public sector, nonprofit, things like that on the software. Um, and you can save costs by leveraging existing hardware. You can, you can choose a little turnkey appliance from us. You can run it as a VM, or you can run it in a public cloud now in Amazon Web Services or in Microsoft Azure. We'll always talk about Untangle's ease of deployment. You know, it's a pretty simple solution to get installed on the network. There are multiple channels of support. Uh, you know, whether you're, you're emailing support, you know, just in a pre-sales trial phase, you know, there's lots of ways to get help. Uh, we do have proactive, actionable alerts and notifications, um, and our historical reporting is, is pretty great. Untangle can keep up to a year of information locally, um, but that data can be offloaded with, with things like Syslog or Google Drive. And obviously, we do offer advanced support, uh, remote support with our live support subscription, and then pretty seamless transparency. You know, we just sit in the middle of your network and we protect your LAN and every packet that comes out, we'll be able to see that if we need to decrypt it to see it, that's part of it. So it gives you a lot of options, you know, to protect and control and even to just monitor a school's network. So Untangle does offer quite a few different products. We'll go into some of those here real quick. The Untangle NG Firewall is our core software platform. Um, this is how we deploy our network-based security and these policy apps. Um, the apps inspect traffic simultaneously, enforcing rules. Um, they share an admin panel, database reporting. Inspecting traffic simultaneously is an important note right there. This is something called virtual pipelining, and it's it's a little faster and a little more efficient than, than some other products in this industry which use things like proxy chaining. Um, I, I describe it to folks as Untangle Untangle uses a dog pile method to inspect traffic rather than a long assembly line method. And it's just faster and it makes us run smoother. Um, and I mentioned the reports, you know, we do have live custom reports that let you drill down on, on really any aspect of network traffic that we're inspecting. And this can help provide you with proof of compliance. You know, you have, you have recourse in reporting. You can go back and see what um, J Smith two was doing on the internet six months ago. If you keep that much information, uh, for example, Some of the features you'll notice in Untangle uh, are just basically, you know, the, the different apps. We have them broken up into feature sets. So you'll see the, the six main feature sets here, protection, filtering, performance, connection management, and then add-ons. The add-ons you'll see there, live support and branding manager. Um, those are pretty self-explanatory for the most part. Branding manager really just lets our, our resellers, our partners, brand Untangle software as their own, you know, captive portal pages, things like that, splash pages. We'll get your logo instead of ours. And obviously, most of this speaks for itself. We'll jump into the apps on my demo server here in just a few minutes. But on the screen here, this is this is every app we make. So what we're looking at is basically a, a breakdown of the, our, our educational complete package, whether it's public sector or nonprofit. So to break down the filtering category a bit, you know, we do offer industry leading web content filtering with over 500 million sites in over 140 categories in 200 languages. This is all provided by a big database in a cloud by one of our vendors. Um, that's one of my favorite aspects of Untangle's content filtering is this is not a, a list of, of hundreds of millions of websites that you have to maintain as an admin. Zavello maintains that for us. They do that in real time. And it's a really, really interesting thing to, to be able to have that hosted in their cloud and not as a, as a static list on your server like some other, some other boxes would be. That would be something you would have to maintain and prune. And, and we have a vendor that does that for us. It's a really cool system. Um, we can force Safe Search even if they turn Safe Search off on their device. Um, obviously, we're enforcing Safe Search. We're not defining it. That's my <laughs> caveat that I let you know. Google defines that, Microsoft, et cetera. But we do a really great job of enforcing Safe Search when we're able to decrypt that traffic. And then policy enforcement for HTTPS and SSL traffic, obviously. We can do some really interesting things here. Um, you can see there in my screenshot, we were still able to process HTTPS by SNI, server name indicators. So we can still do some really interesting blocking of HTTPS, even if, if our root certificate isn't installed on an endpoint, for example. So some of the uh, bandwidth control options, mobile app options that we offer, um, there are over 350 applications to block, flag, or allow. You know, these include social apps, YouTube games. Um, our layer seven app awareness identifies incoming application traffic regardless of which port it's trying to hit. Uh, 
So you can optimize bandwidth for for whatever you need. Maybe maybe the school's doing online assessments that week, you know, using a uh, uh, web-based learning tools, quick little uh, tutorials, that kind of stuff. We can always optimize anything to a URL, to a certain app, all kinds of fun stuff once we have that app identified. Within application control, uh, we actually have about 2,000 known application signatures. Um, that's a really big list. Obviously, you can you can just go do a quick search. But things like Facebook, and I'll show you this on our demo server, things like Facebook actually contain 10 or 12 application signatures to make all the all the functionality of a mobile app work. So I'll show you what that looks like, but it's it's an interesting thing to know that we have over 350 apps to block, but there are about 1,900 signatures in here. So we'll, we'll go through some of those here in just a second on my demo server. Obviously, you can monitor and track bandwidth abusers by, by username, if you connect to a directory uh, or use ours, um, by mobile app, protocol, website, et cetera, to just determine the source of bandwidth challenges. There's, a really, there's three or four really handy built-in reports from bandwidth control and from application control. I mean, in, in bandwidth control, we can just go say top applications by size. So we can do some really interesting things right out of the box with the reporting when it comes to bandwidth consumption. Open Wi-Fi is a fun new animal. Uh, lots of schools are offering this. The BYOD uh, nature of education has kind of taken off. Um, it's a it's a handy thing for schools with limited budget. A lot of schools also do things like one-to-one -one mobile devices, um, which will sometimes be more restricted, but also maybe just be jumping on open Wi-Fi. It depends on the school. Um, but this will do some interesting things for you if you allow things like BYOD on the network, uh, or even you know just public Wi-Fi if there's a, a lobby or a waiting area, or you know if the school has an assembly or, or an award ceremony, you have a lot of people showing up that might want to jump on the Wi-Fi. So this will let you get visibility and control over the devices that connect using the Untangled Captive Portal. So you can separate mobile devices to a different policy to change the filtering and application rules. I, I personally do that at home. Um, my Wi-Fi is on a different policy than my local machines. So if you come in, if you come to my house and you get on my Wi-Fi, you go through some different apps because I have that set up based on the interface, et cetera, et cetera. So I could still, if I wanted to, use the capture portal to force authentication with Radius or AD or OAuth from one of the social sites. Uh, this is a really handy tool. Um, I don't know if you can see this on my screen there, but we can also track logins using MAC addresses in the in the options over there on the right. Um, that's a really handy tool. You know, whether or not we're seeing, you know, a, a very specific username from something like Active Directory or a, a Google email, we can still track their device once they're logged in. And you see some additional options over there, setting cookie-based auth that you know, if you want uh, people to just log in once in the morning, you know, we'll set uh, cookie-based off and then leave that to 24 hours. Device management is a handy thing as well. Uh, you can have, tag a host, a device, a user, whatever you want, and you can use that tag to manipulate that device's traffic through different policies. This is this is something I actually use at home too. Um, if if people come over there, I'm not going to necessarily always get something like a host name off their device. Sometimes I'll see, you know, Jerry's iPhone. If you've gone in and you've set a host name, I'll see that and I can do some interesting things when I see it. But I like to go tag things and use triggers in Untangle to do automated tagging. So tags are really, really handy because they're open-ended. They're just labels that you type in. So if you set up a tag... Um, for someone who's always going to sites categorized as pornography, we could label the tag as NSFW or, or porn user or anything you want. And then like I've done at home, I have a policy called Wi-Fi users and they come over here and, and I know, sorry everyone, but you get throttled you know, when you come in on my Wi-Fi. So I have some other devices that are more important. So we can do that per policy. We don't always have to do that randomly for one device here, one device there. Push everyone through one policy with different bandwidth rules. So this is going to give you those, those unique granular policies, like I said, for students, teachers, individual classrooms, different IPs, different ports, whatever you need to. We can, uh, I'll go over this a little bit in my demo server, but we can actually kind of go through a little bit of a school setup because that's what our demo server is, is basically set up as. You can see in my screenshot there, we've got a teacher policy, student policy, student labs, and admin policy. So we'll talk about all that so we jump over to the demo server here. Deploying Untangle is not 
super complicated anymore. We have a lot of options. Uh, this is still technically a hybrid cloud product. So it is cloud managed, but you can have an on-premise gateway still if you're using a piece of hardware, running a VM at all, on a local machine. Um, like I said earlier, we do use virtual pipelining. So we don't do the, the assembly line. It's called proxy chaining. So I, I my analogy is uh, a really interesting idea is to visualize an HTTPS packet being decrypted to HTTP. Once an HTTP packet appears, all of our apps are able to see that naturally. That's one of the best use cases for decrypting traffic is to allow things like virus blocker and bandwidth control that visibility. So if I decrypt a packet to HTTP, I'd like to tell folks that that packet is suddenly the, the ball in a rugby game, you know, and every single player on the field is piling on to check it. Those players are our applications. So it's not an assembly line where they have to pass the ball down through each person in single file. That takes so much longer. Let's do simultaneous inspection. So, so like I say, the, the, the easy kind of visualization is we do a dog pile rather than an assembly line, and it's a lot faster and more efficient. Um, because of that, we have a lighter hardware footprint. We could be run on smaller, cheaper hardware, whether you buy that from us or you source your own. This is one of the benefits of, of running on Tangle is that it can be installed on just about anything. If you have a spare server in the closet, if there's a spare PC, you can put a second network card in. Depending on the size of the network, those are feasible options. So I, I love that about Untangle. Uh, this runs Linux as the underlying operating system. We're Linux Debian. So that alone gives us a pretty small footprint and lets us be really fast and agile. And I mentioned a little bit earlier, we do have public cloud deployments now, so you can run Untangle in AWS or Microsoft Azure with bring your own license or pay as you go licensing. Um, that's honestly a whole other topic for webinar. If you have any questions about that, you know, hit us up. But it's a really, really interesting new aspect doing firewall as a service in the public cloud like that. That was an accident, total accident. So speaking of the cloud, Scout IQ is one of the two aspects of the Untangle cloud. So this is cloud-based threat intelligence. Um, what it's actually doing is aggregating anonymous data from across all the other Untangle deployments worldwide that connect to it. So if one Untangle in, in Belgium sees a piece of malware with a, a new distribution point, some new telemetry data, it uploads that to Scout IQ, where it's then analyzed and verified or not. And then all the other un untangles that connect are updated. So it's a really interesting thing for for you know zero day telemetry data, emerging threats. Um, there's in 2019, uh, you you almost have to have some kind of intelligence platform that identifies these threats in the wild now. So without something like this on your network, I, I feel like you're a little bit of a disadvantage in antivirus. Um, this is included in our virus blocker app at no additional cost. So it's just a it's a box that's checked. So we want to be able to connect to this. Um, we also connect to the Bitdefender cloud there in Virus Blocker. So that app alone is doing some really interesting things. Um, this is obviously not meant to replace your endpoint antivirus, things like that. But Untangle at the Gateway with Scout IQ in the cloud is a really, really interesting aspect to what should be a multi-layered approach to antivirus at your school. The other aspect of our uh, cloud infrastructure is Command Center. So what we've done is uh, basically giving you centralized management in our cloud. And for, for anyone who's used Untangle in the past, this is basically just your uh, account page now. So when you log on to untangle.com, it's going to take you now into Command Center. So obviously this is gonna simplify management. Um, whether you have one Untangle box or 100, you can do all of the management from the cloud now in your pajamas on your couch. Um, it's, this is trying to reduce management overhead, you know, to make a, a one box to many boxes policy change across locations, et cetera, et cetera, as, as simplified. Because we don't want you to have to drive to that other school building that's 25 miles away. We could do this stuff through the cloud. Part of that is zero touch provisioning. So if you have multiple locations and limited staff, you know, you can just configure kind of your, your first NG firewall in the cloud and apply that remotely with zero touch provisioning. Um, this is also integrating endpoint security now. Uh, while we don't push install endpoint antivirus software, 
we do partner with Malwarebytes now. We've integrated with Malwarebytes Enterprise uh, to provide status on endpoints and hosts on the network. Uh, you can drill down and get details on their traffic, get alerts, and you can actually uh, initiate some scanning from the Malwarebytes on that PC from here. So in Command Center, you'll have a hosts menu and you're able to go in and say, well, this one right here has malware bytes on it. Let's just run a quick antivirus scan from Command Center. You can see their web traffic. Um, you can also run a port scan to get a quick end map on that host. It's a really cool solution. Um, the question I get asked the most is, do we have to install anything from Untangle? And no, it's, there's nothing additional from Untangle that you have to push down to those clients. This is leveraging the malware bytes enterprise that's on those endpoint PCs. And again, you know, Command Center is part of the NG Firewall Complete Package. Um, there's no extra charge for any of this centralized management. When you have that complete package, you're able to create template policies in the cloud and, and push them to other devices, et cetera, et cetera. It's a really, really cool feature. Um, I, I personally use it, you know, every day. I run Untangle at home, so I always hop in to take a quick peek at my reports. Um, you know, if anyone's logged into my Wi-Fi, I, I leave Wi-Fi open for my apartment neighbors for fun reporting and things like that. So I always get an alert if a new device pops up and I can jump into Command Center and see what it is. So I, I love it and I use it every day. So I mentioned turnkey appliances. If you're buying from us or installing on your own, we do offer some little boxes though. So the, the turnkey solution is a little device from Untangle. So on the left, you see our X series. That's our newest line of hardware. Um, smaller offices, remote sites, things like that. The the XW series obviously has Wi-Fi included. You see that dual radio Wi-Fi. Um, regardless of, of you know your your actual budget, you know if you're looking for a piece of hardware, always let us know. You know we also we always do multi-site discounts on hardware. We do some fun things, you know. But the the cool thing about getting a Tangle hardware is for one, it's pre-installed. It is a little more turnkey, plug and play kind of thing, and you get a hardware warranty. So it it can come down to budget sometimes. It can come down to personal preference. If you're just a hardware person and you like to build and maintain your own servers, you know, Untangle is a really cool solution because you can just throw us on there. Um, but you don't have to, you know. So that's that's one of my one of my favorite aspects of Untangle is that you you can use this and administer it one without being a hardware expert because you can just buy a box from us, and two honestly without being an absolute Linux expert. Um, we'll go through my demo server here and. The entire time we're in that demo server, you'll never see a command line interface. Um, this is a little bit different flavor, even though Linux Debian is running underneath. So all these boxes, like I said, come pre-installed with Untangle. So it's a little bit less headache, a little bit less downtime probably if you want to just get a box from us. So let me jump out of full screen here. We'll go over to my demo server. So this is Untangle. We're on demo.untangle.com right now. You're always uh, encouraged to jump on, play around. Um, there's no password. It's always on. So we're obviously going to take a pretty light touch. Uh, we're not going to dive into a lot of apps. Like I said, this is a 101 series. So we're going to we're going to go over the look and feel of Untangle, not a ton of the features functionalities. Um, the Untangle dashboard is a really really interesting piece of code because this is fully customizable. Uh, it's very dynamic. If you log into this from a phone or a tablet, it will just scale to match. There's there's no third-party apps or anything like that you need for remote access. On my dashboard, I have a, kind of a, a, we do kind of a top 12, top 15 reports as widgets by default. But you can always come over here and disable these, completely delete them if you like, and then add different widgets. Um, for example, what I just did, I just disabled a host name widget here because it's only showing me IP addresses but I actually have usernames on my network. So I would probably want to come over here to create new report widget, and I want to see all the reports that can show me usernames. So here they all are. Top usernames getting on the internet the most. Top usernames chewing up my bandwidth. There's some really, really useful stuff here. So keep that in mind, the dashboard is fully customizable. Um, I also like to point out the quick drill down options here. You could just pick a user, client ID, whatever you need. Policy ID would let us just go say policy is you know, teachers, let's go see what's happening with their traffic in these reports. One of the things I always point out is that this dashboard, these widgets, max out at 24 hours of information. So like I said, Untangle can keep up to a year. If you need a deeper dive, you can always click on the reports viewer up here, or you can go straight to the report in the viewer. 
So what we're looking at is top sites by size. The so sum of the size of requested content grouped by website. Over here on my legend, I'm able to click and remove things that are irrelevant. Support, counts. So for the most part, I'm seeing a Facebook problem emerging, right? So from here, I could go in and block Facebook, block social networking. Maybe it's a mobile app. I can go block that as well or throttle it. This is where, though, we can change our time range to go back as far as we need to. So if you need it, we can go back up to a year, as I said. All the reports are customizable. There are about 400 by default when you install all of our apps. Um, this is a lot. This is a big dose of information. You know, it's a lot to go through. So once again, that little search bar is right here. You can just say, I want to see the top sites being visited. It's a really quick search, narrows it down really fast for you. And there you have it. You can also create a new report from scratch here if you want. I, I think the customization option, finding a report that's almost what you want and customizing it, is a little lower learning curve than creating a new report from scratch. Um, but either way, we have a lot of documentation on both processes. Our support team can always help out. Um, if you're trialing Untangle, obviously the, the pre-sales team, me and our other sales engineer, uh, we're able to answer questions too, um, all that kind of stuff. You can email us at support or pre-sales at untangle.com when you're trialing. So that's kind of what the reporting looks like with Untangle. There's, there's an awful lot to go over. Um, we do have lots of webinars, like I said, documentation on each of these individual apps. Um, I do want to just kind of bounce through a couple of more uh, UIs here. As you'll see, this is our sessions viewer, you know, real-time view into traffic. Tons of information presented. A lot more you can present if you like. Then the pane over here obviously gives you a quick peek into some of that stuff that's not presented. It just can be collapsed as well if you don't care to stare at it. Um, Hosts and devices are showing devices connecting to your network. If I can, if this is where I was saying earlier, I can come over here and tag a device. Um, if I knew this device, like I said earlier, was always searching uh, pornography, I could say not safe for work. And I don't ever want that tag to expire. So that's the manual way of doing it. We can also automate those. The config menu, I like to touch on. Uh, we will not be diving down any of these rabbit holes today, but this is where things like the basic layer three, uh, you know, network connectivity options are, things like that, interfaces, filter rules. Um, the one thing I'll point out here real quick is the troubleshooting tab. So uh, here in pre-sales and in the support office, we get uh, a lot of folks who, who kind of don't realize that you can do some of these things from Untangle. So you can run connectivity tests and pings and trace routes, all that stuff from the Untangle here if you need to. Um, I could just do a quick trace route. I don't know if this is gonna work actually. Let's just do Google. Just run a quick test and it'll give you some good results. You know, These are things you can do before you even have to contact us to give us some more clues, maybe something Maybe my trace route fails right at the next hop, and I know I just need to go change that device around. Take some quick steps. So there's some really valuable information here on the troubleshooting tab. If you've never seen it, you know, config network troubleshooting. The config menu also contains, yes, I know, it's a demo server. This is also where we see our local directory here. If you do need usernames, we can jump in right there and create them locally. You don't always have to have something like Active Directory. Let's just refresh that. So we'll get into the apps next. Uh, what we see, on, what we'll see on my screen, is the Untangle complete package. So this will be every app we make. You will see some redundant ones, however, things like Web Monitor here, Spam Blocker Lite, Application Control Lite. These will be overwritten by their full versions when you install them. So they're really here for display purposes. Um, but these are, this is every app we make. So you can see there, you know, a, a little bit of a split where it says service apps. Um, I like to make that delineation to folks because there is a bit of a difference. You know, we're, we're talking about different layers of functionality here. So when we look at things like Untangle licensing, you know, we license by hosts, by IPs. We offer things called bypass rules that let you take hosts out of your licensing. They remove them from layer seven filtering, basically bypassing these apps here. Bypass hosts will still have access to reporting, things like that, but we're really truly bypassing to save you some money are the, the layer seven apps that do the filtering. So a bypassed, uh, like a local printer, a, a voice over IP phone, that's a good example. We don't need to filter that traffic generally. So we would bypass that and then they would still be protected behind the untangle. They're not going around us physically. They're just not getting beyond layer three of our network stack. So what they would miss would be things like web filter. 
Um, I like to show this categories list, list off. I mentioned earlier, this is a really, really big database. They're, I think they're closer to 600 million sites than they are to 500 million at this point. So one of the, one of the things I always show off is how quick and easy you can do lookups here. If you weren't uh, sure what's, what category to block, you could just come over here and look for Twitter. You wouldn't see it. So the site lookup will tell you the category that's in. This, I hope, will say social networking, and there we are. So that's what I would go block to block Twitter. Um, a, a quick little tip, though, is that in our database, a URL can be in up to three categories individually. ESPN is one of those. It's in news, sports, and streaming video. So if you don't want to unblock one of those, you can just whitelist ESPN.com here. This is a blacklist. Block sites and past sites both work the same with syntax matching. If I wanted to, for example, try to block um, anything with the word porn in the URL, I could do this. If I wanted to start a little more strict than that and just block the entire internet, I could do asterisk, period, asterisk, because there's not a URL on earth that doesn't have an asterisk in it. So that's kind of how the, the content filtering works here with the URL level. We use glob matching for syntax. You don't always have to put in the entire chain, the entire URI information to block a site. Past clients just passes a, a client IP around the web filter. I, I personally don't use this a whole lot anymore because it removes you from malware protection and, and phishing and things like that. Um, the at the rules tab is what I use now instead because we can come in here and we'll see a lot of different conditions. As you can see, it ties into a few apps here and, and we can do quick inclusions or exclusions to block or pass traffic based on username, MAC address, tags, IP, whatever. So if I were within a policy, like in the teacher's policy, I could come in here and say two of these teachers, three of these devices need access to things other people don't have. So we could do that here without creating a new policy. Then the advanced tab is where I mentioned we can enforce safe searching earlier and we can block HTTPS without necessarily decrypting it. So some of those are still really valuable. Um, and then the Untangle reports, as I said, are, are pretty extensive and I think our I think our web filter reports are some of the best we offer. It has about 40 reports built in. And you can even get a quick peek into just uh, web events. This is a session viewer for just port 443 and port 80. You can see this person is signing into their Google account because we decrypt that traffic so we get that kind of visibility. That's a good, uh, that's a good kind of visual representation of Untangled decrypting HTTPS to HTTP. We get visibility like that. Uh, I could probably go over and see what these people were searching for on Google.com as well, if I felt like it. Um, and then, you know, it's just like the, all the other reporting, same same drill down, same time range. So that's kind of what the web filter looks like. Um, I mentioned earlier the policy management. We go through that kind of fast, uh, but you can see here I'm on my default policy. So if we go and look through the policies, this is the, the screenshot we saw. We're on, whoops, we're on my default policy now. And if we click down here on the teacher policy, we'll see those are grayed out because when I created teacher policy, I gave it a parent of the default. So it started by inheriting all those rules. That's a really handy tool with Untangle Policy Management because it, it means you don't have to start over every time you create a new policy. And then I could come over here and say uh, teachers only. And this is how I determine who goes through that policy. I could do this a lot of different ways, as you can see. I'm going to pretend I have something like Active Directory and there's a group called Teachers. So user in group, this means group is teachers. Always go through the teacher policy. So that's a pretty absolute thing when they sign into Active Directory, they're always gonna go through those apps. What that actually looks like, if we go to the teacher policy here, you'll see that they're physically grayed out because they inherit from above. So we can't change those. But unless they need some different rules like they did with web filter, we don't have to. So let's say we needed to suddenly throttle some of the teacher's apps. We would come in and we would just install bandwidth control into their policy. It's a really simple thing. Um, we can be really broad, really granular. Um, but like I said, the, the handy thing to remember is that you don't always have to start over with each of these policies. This is kind of what the apps look like. Uh, this is our, our newest version, version 14.1.1. Um, as you can see, there are some, some really handy tools, lots of flavors of VPN, intrusion prevention is offered. Um, you, you see a firewall app here, uh, which is a pretty interesting animal, to be honest. It's a, it's a layer seven software firewall, but we also offer a, a layer three firewall 
the, in, under the config menu called filter rules. So Untangle is kind of two different firewalls. They do different things, um, but they're both really handy tools. Um, whether we're your true gateway device acting as your firewall, or if we're installed in bridge mode behind a firewall, we can st technically still use these options. Um, may maybe, uh, for example, this has happened in the past. Maybe the, the existing firewall in front of us doesn't do things like geolocation easily. That's a very simple thing with Untangle now. We can come in and say, well, I want to block all the servers that geolocate to uh, United States. That would be a pretty foolish rule for me to create since I live in Colorado in the United States, but that's how easy it is. So the, the actual firewall app here, as you can see, sees a lot of conditions that a layer three, that a layer three firewall will never see. Things like usernames, uh, you know, user groups, that kind of stuff. So this is kind of the state of Untangle uh, when you have the complete package. Like I said, I didn't want to drill through a ton of these. Uh, there's a there's a lot to go over. You know, this is a, a minefield of rabbit holes, as it were. We do have uh, a lot of individual tech talks on some different apps. You know, obviously we do deep dives into these um, in our tech talk series, but that's kind of the, the look and feel of Untangle. You know, like I said, we haven't seen a command line yet. It's all very fast and responsive. You've seen me use my back button multiple times. These are these are real URLs here. If you if you bookmark a specific URL, the, the application control rules tab, you know, that's that's where you're going to go. So it's, it's a really handy tool, especially for, for things like uh, remote support. You know, our, our support text can actually send you a, a hyperlink. You know, go to this page on your Untangle and tell me if this box is checked. So it's a handy tool. Um, the interface itself is really fast, really responsive, and, and I love the changes we made here uh, recently on the server product itself. Um, namely adding a search bar for things like application control where there's 2,000 application signatures. Um, speaking of, we'll go take a real quick peek at those and we'll see what the questions look like. I mentioned earlier, we have about 1,900 app signatures and one I like to show people is Facebook. Not a lot of people uh, on the admin side understand how these signatures work and it's a very different thing from URL traffic. You can see here that this is the actual Facebook app. You know, and that's something I might want to flag, but if I don't want to block it, I don't necessarily have to. I could come block all the other aspects of it that people like to use. Or I could tar pit those so they don't even know they're being blocked. So while we could go through and throttle the Facebook app or block it outright, we could also, if we wanted to, just go throttle Facebook video because it's a separate signature. So keep that in mind. You know, we don't always have to be... Um, uh, you know, heavy handed. We don't always want to be big brother, I guess. Sometimes we can just take different steps to dissuade people's behavior when they're doing negative things. So it's, it's all depends on your, your organization, what kind of school you are. You know, this is uh, a, a lot of religious schools are a lot stricter than this out of the box, obviously. So, you know, something like Farmville, I probably just want to block outright. I would, I wouldn't even give that a chance. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do here with mobile apps. So these are going to be pretty valuable on, on a network that allows BYOD. You know, we're going to see all kinds of mobile application signatures, even, even at a school that does something like one-to-one uh, uh, -one Chromebooks, or you allow people to bring laptops. We'll see a lot of traffic here. So that's kind of my spiel on the demo server here. Let's jump over to our next slide here and go over just a couple of these differentiators. And I think we've gone over these mostly in general. Um, but it is really <laughs> maybe the easiest firewall I've ever used. Uh, to deploy and to get running. One of the one of the best aspects of that is that we can install in transparent bridge mode. You know, you don't always have to take the network down, change people's gateways. You can drop Untangle on spare hardware in transparent bridge mode with our two week free trial and have all of these apps available as well as live support. So you can get your entire configuration set up before we even, you know, pull the trigger and, and you purchase Untangle. Um, this is enterprise level security. But as you saw, you know, we, we go for consumer level simplicity. Um, Untangle does have a home product now. So we've done our best to simplify these UIs as much as we can. Like, like I said a few times, you don't have to be a Linux expert to administer Untangle, but you also don't necessarily have to be a network security expert or, or, or a network admin even. You know, we have a lot of just kind of mom and pop customers now who have a firewall at their house. So we, we have had to, you know, simplify some things, obviously. So I like I like the state of the interfaces now. I think it's as easy to use as it's ever been. Um, you've seen, you know, this is browser-based, fully responsive admin. Um, the reporting on box is is as good as you can find. 
you know, like I said, we can keep a ton of information, offload that for, for safekeeping, whatever you need to do. Um, the default settings are tuned to real world use cases. People often ask me what are Untangle's best practices? Do we have a document of that? We don't really have a document of that, but we have a, a setup option in our wizard that lets you choose recommended apps rather than custom apps. So if you choose the recommended apps in our setup wizard, that'll tune everything to real world cases and basically set up those check boxes and filters like you saw on my demo server. Just the, the basics that we think you need to do right out of the box. We went through policy management. You know, We could segment admins, teachers, students, whatever we need to do as granular or as broad as possible. Um, and, and we do have some really, really comprehensive bandwidth shaping capabilities, as you saw, like uh, quota management, uh, penalty boxes. We could put a quota on, on every device on the student policy. You know, we could say they get 300 megs of data a day, an hour, a week, whatever. And then if they go over that, we can take some interesting steps. You know, we can throttle them, we can tag them, put them in a penalty box. Um, we also offer automatic seamless upgrades. The product will always be up to date with no downtime. That doesn't cost anything to upgrade to the new version of Untangle. So if you set it to auto update, you can also choose a schedule when it does that. The, the flexibility and the competitive cost of Untangle, I think, is, is almost unmatched as well. Um, this is a software-based solution. You know, we're a software company, but it, it can be deployed on our hardware that we offer or your own, you know, a virtual machine of your choosing or in the public cloud. Um, you'll see on our website, you can download an OVA file for Untangle to run in VMware ESXi. That's the one we officially build for and support, but you can always download the ISO for, for something like uh, Hyper-V or, or VirtualBox. Um, Untangle is freemium software. You know, you download from untangle.com, like I said, that gives you a 14-day trial of everything we make. Uh, at the end of that 14 days, if you don't purchase paid subscriptions, that will revert to the Untangle free package and you'll lose most of that layer seven functionality. There is cloud-based centralized management and on-box reporting included. You know, there's no additional hardware required for that. Um, this is, <laughs> that's a tough thing for admins to wrap their head around sometimes. This is not a firewall or a content filter. It's a unified threat management device. So it is an all-in-one box. You know, um, I'm, I'm kind of an old guy too and a former admin. So I'm used to a, a different box for reporting or for offloading, uh, you know, SSL inspection. But but like I said, because of Untangle's code, because we do things so fast with virtual pipelining, we're able to do all that stuff here at once. So it's it's doing everything you need all in one box, does it really, really fast. Untangle uh, just went into its uh, 16th year of existence. Uh, we are not a, a new kid on the block anymore, not a startup anymore. We are getting some pretty good recognition. Um, you can see here, we're, we keep winning the awards. You know, um, The one I'm personally most proud of is on the top right there, uh, our 2018 Gold Stevie Award for customer service and technical support. That is a big deal to me. Um, in this niche, supporting you know small to mini businesses, small schools, things like that, Customer service is a is a huge part of that. Um, Untangle is a small business catering to small businesses. If you need help, you're going to get help. You know, it's it's not like calling a huge vendor or or sitting online. You know, with your your ISP, you're on hold for 15, 20 minutes. We're we're very different feel support wise. All the support is located here in Colorado in Mountain Time. We don't outsource support. We don't do tiered support. So um, anyone who who answers the phone, whether it's uh, you know Jason or Cyrus or Tiffany or anybody can help you with anything you, you call about Untangle wise. So that's why they keep winning gold awards for us like that. Uh, but you'll see, you know, we we get a lot of love online from uh, you know Spiceworks uh, loves Untangle. You know, we're their favorite software firewall, favorite content filtering box, and and the Untangle community forums are actually a really really great resource. Um, I'm on there a lot. Uh, to be perfectly honest, the the Two employees in Untangle who answer the most questions are, are the founder of Untangle and our director of QA. So you get really, really good answers on the forums. Um, Untangle's, Untangle's an interesting piece of software. And I, I in pre-sales, I go to great lengths to try to get people to be comfortable and not feel intimidated by it. Please don't feel like a, a newbie, you know, or or like you'll get made fun of if you post a, what you think is a dumb question on the forums. It's not like that. Our forums are really helpful. It's a really, really good community. There's a lot of really good resources in there, especially if you're, you know, uh, uh, running on your own custom hardware that we don't support, things like that. The forums are, are a great resource because of that. Then obviously some quick quotes here. You can see these on our site, on our resources page. The, there's a lot of case studies, customer testimonial videos, things like that. Um, 
we're, we're in some pretty big schools. You can see, you know, we've got some uh, some good little testimonials here. Um, I mean, right there on the bottom right, you know, that's that's kind of the bottom line to me from Breakwater. Having web filter installed and implemented, we are able to demonstrate we are SIPA compliant. So it, it all comes down to, you know, protecting the school, whether we're talking about actual student traffic or reputation, you know, you don't want to get hit with a compliance violation, HIPAA or SIPA, something like that. Untangle is a really, really good solution, all in one box that can help with those things. Let's check and see, uh, Shanna, do we have any questions hanging out there that we can answer? Yeah, there were some questions, uh, a lot of questions around how they can deploy. So I know you kind of touched on that about using your own server and where they can find resources for um, uh, running in the public cloud. So wanted you to maybe show where they can get their hardware requirements and, and kind of the different options. Yeah, so on untangled.com, if you hover over products, there's a how to deploy page. And this will basically show you all your options. How do you want to do this, et cetera, et cetera. As you scroll, as you scroll, there's more options. Uh, if you're configuring your own hardware, there is a little hardware requirements table right here. That will take you out to our wiki. So if you're, and, and when we say devices, remember folks, we're talking concurrent IPs. We also offer those bypass rules. So we're only talking about the IPs, the devices you really want to filter. So these are our base requirements. If you have 400 computers, we need you to get to two cores or more with two gigs of RAM or more. It shouldn't be tough, you know. Um, all of our hardware is 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 up to spec, obviously, and you can look at our hardware specs on the site too. But this is a quick, easy table, and I personally, um, I mean, as cheap as memory is now, I would personally recommend just going four gigs so you can run our 64-bit software. Our hardware was all going to go four gigs soon. Um, it's just, I mean, it's another thirty dollars if you're building your own. You know, RAM sticks are so cheap now. Um, but that's where that is. Yeah, that lives on our wiki, but you can link to it right there from the Untangle products page. Thanks, uh, Chad. There were some questions about special pricing. I don't know if we mentioned this at all, um, that we offer for schools and whether you're a private or public school, um, we offer special pricing uh, for you. Uh, so I know we know budgets are a major concern for pretty much any school out there, whether you're public or private. So um, just want to reiterate that we do offer uh, special pricing, whether you're, you're a public school or private school or nonprofit, et cetera. Um, so um, if that's a concern for you, please please be sure to check that out. Yeah, it's it's uh, really good discounts on the software. So by all means, you know, to let your sales rep know uh, if you contact us. Just you know, give us a breakdown, and we'll be able to give you the right option. And it's it's going to be eye opening. It's a really 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 big discount. Let's see, anything else out there? Yeah, uh, Yeah. there were some questions. Um, you kind of mentioned Command Center, but I wanted you to maybe iterate more on how that can be helpful for schools that have multiple campuses or locations. Let's just sign into it real quick. Oop. So I'm gonna jump into our little demo account um, and I'll show you real quick what we were talking about. So. Command Center offers a policies section. So that's one of the things that adds really good value to the Untangle Complete Package is that if you have three, four Untangles at different sites all running our Complete Package, they all have the same apps and you can create turnkey appliance templates. So you can do that over here under policies. If I wanted to uh, create a template, I can say this is, my, uh, this is my first device. I got it all set up like I want. So that's gonna be my master appliance. If I choose next, I can say I need to send it to this appliance. Anytime I change something on the master, I want that to sync to the other appliances immediately. So I would do that right here. Um, this is a really, really cool option, uh, especially for uh, you know school districts that have you know seven, eight, nine buildings or campuses all with different individual WAN connections. We can basically get your first one set up and save that as a template policy and push it to all the other ones. Um, so this is a this is a really interesting aspect to our centralized management. Like like Shannon said, you know, like I said earlier, this is all free. Um, this is just part of the Untangle Complete Package. Um, the little option right here, sync all new appliances. That's 
that's relevant, I guess, if you're uh, like in that scenario, if you have a school district and you have a lot of different individual untangled boxes that all need the same exact rules. You know, any any new box that gets put on the network would sync to this policy as well. So that's applicable sometimes, sometimes not. It depends on the industry, the, the use case. But that's how we do this. Um, we basically just say this is the master box. These are the uh, box A, box B, box C, box D that inherit all that stuff. From the from headquarters, whatever you want to call it, master box. I don't uh, I don't have any issues doing all this on the cloud anymore. You know, this used to be kind of a weird thing to me. You know, pushing all that stuff through the cloud, but it works like a champ. Um, and and the fact that it's free now is honestly a pretty <laughs> I don't know. It's a little bit different. You know, in, in this industry, you know, we're we're offering a lot of cool features here, but adding this functionality and and making it no additional cost is is big you know we've been wanting to do this for a long time as a company so it's it's finally here and it's working really well all right i think that's about it i think our team kind of is handling most of the questions okay. now yeah I, I didn't see anything else that was unanswered so we'll we'll power through you Jenny, want me to handle this one, one? Yeah, yeah go for it yeah that uh, looks like marketing yeah. <laughs> Yes, um, just a few promotions. I know we did mention the special pricing, uh, which unfortunately there's not a slide on here, but as Chad showed you on the website, um, there's those options for the public sector and um, nonprofits or, or private schools. But we do also offer other promotions like our trade-in trade-out program. So if you have an existing Untangle license that maybe you've outgrown, um, you can call in and, and upgrade that to something that would fit more your network more. Or if you have a competitor's product and you're looking to switch to Untangle but want to kind of get some pricing, call us. We're, we'll be happy to try and, and match that or um, you know offer you an incentive to switch over. And as Chad mentioned, um, we do have a home product. So for those of you that are using us at home, we love our home users. If you do end up bringing us to work at some point, please call us and make sure you get that discount because you know that can be very beneficial for your for your business environment, especially if you're trying to get up and running and and using professional services or whatnot. So it can be a costly costly uh, purchase if if you don't get those coupon codes. I love coupon codes, so. <laughs> um, I think that's about it. And now here it comes, our winner. So our first time ever doing this. So please bear with me as I just randomly select a, an attendee um, who will win a $50 Amazon gift card. Uh, let's see, the winner is uh, Jason Matthews. So please, Jason Matthews, check your email. Um, you'll I'll be emailing you just to make sure you're a real person and then uh, be sending you uh, that Amazon code uh, to get that $50 gift card. So thank you everyone for attending. I believe that's all we have, Chad, right? I believe so. Uh, yeah, so uh, if you have any additional questions or we didn't get to your question, I do apologize. Um, but you can always reach out to us, sales at untangle.com, um, support at untangle.com. We're always here to help answer your questions um, in any way we can. And we hope that you uh, got all the information you needed. Chad is also available to do more specific demos um, if this wasn't as uh, specific for you as you had hoped. Presales at untangle.com will also help. So uh, we hope to see you next time. And thank you, Chad, for the great demo.